In today's video, we're going to be talking about the differences between two main types of bone tissue. And we're going to be talking about compact bone, which is also known as cortical bone, and spongy bone, which is also known as trabecular bone. Bone itself has very unique properties, and because of this, it allows for it being hard and strong, while also being lightweight. Usually when we're looking at a unit of bone, the outer layer is what consists of the compact bone and the internal tissue of the bone is made up of spongy bone. The outer cortical bone is very dense and it has a smooth, white and solid appearance. The compact bone is what provides the main function for the skeleton and that's providing support, protecting organs, storing and releasing mostly calcium and providing the levers for movement. The spongy bone is the internal tissue of bone and it's very porous which means it has holes which allowed the movement of minerals and fluid through it. Because of this feature, more metabolic activity occurs within the spongy bone in comparison to compact bone because molecules can pass within it easily. This porous nature makes spongy bone less dense compared to compact bone, and in fact spongy bone is more vascular and it contains the red bone marrow, where red blood cells are made. Because of its nature, spongy bone is said to be weaker and more flexible in comparison to compact bone. Now that we've discussed the main features of compact and spongy bone, I want to talk about the microscopic differences between the two. If we look at compact bone and spongy bone through a microscope, we'd be able to see the arrangement of cells are very different. Compact bone has a special arrangement in multiple microscopic columns, which are called osteons. So essentially, these groups of osteons together is what makes up compact bone. These osteons look like this. Each osteon has a layer of compact bone tissue called lamellae. These lamellae layers surround a central canal called the Haversian canal, which is what provides the blood supply to the area. So we have this Haversian canal, and then these are the lamellae surrounding it. We have the osteoblasts and osteocytes, which are surrounding the Haversian canal, and they are dotted around in their own circular pattern, and the place in which these osteocytes and osteoblasts are located are called lacunae, so that's the space that they are in. In the diagram here we can see Volkmann canals, and these are just canals which connect the osteons together. Now for spongy bone, the individual units which make up spongy bone are called trabeculae, and they look like this. Because of this arrangement of trabeculae in spongy bone, they have a very high surface area. The way that trabeculae arrange themselves is in the direction of mechanical load, so because this can always change, it's very easy for trabeculae to also remodel and change its structural position, and that's based on the direction of mechanical load. Remember, within the spaces of trabeculae, we have bone marrow which is present, and that's where there is hematopoietic stem cells which produce red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets.